recording. Hello and welcome to Mostly Minnesota Music Podcast Edition. I'm Ann Tracy. I'm here with my co-host. Heather Baker. Yeah, and we are here with <laughs> Kurt Newman from the Bodines. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. So glad. I know there are a few things that we want to talk about, but I'm just going to jump into um, the highlight for our week. This our, our week is going to see you coming up at the Dakota. It'd be Dakota awesome. Denver. Yeah. Yeah, it's become kind of a tradition to be there, um, head up into the cold and do, I'm doing like four shows in two nights. So physically it's, uh, I got to get myself psyched for it because it's a smaller venue. So I'm always, we have to do two shows a night, but you know, the crowd picks me up and keeps me going and uh, have a lot of fun. It's real intimate, you know, do a lot of nice things and different things with people, but you can, we can all sing along together. Well, what I've been reminding people of when I'm playing shows these days is that, um, you know, music brings us all together and there's so much divisiveness in the country right now. And it's always coming at you from the TV that when you come out to a show and we all sing these songs together, it kind of brings us all back together again. We realize that there's this great common ground between us that um, we can all share in this kind of energy. So the shows we've been doing that have been really great for kind of feeling, feeling good and, and everybody comes and sings along. So the Dakota that works really well because it's such a small little venue. And so we can all get together and feel each other. <laughs> nice. Well, and I'll say I'll, I'll, that the, the shows are December 16th and December 17th at 7 and 9 p.m. And the seven o'clock is an acoustic set. And this later it's is- not, It's not actually acoustic. We oh. we pretty much just come out and play because we have so much stuff. We yeah. we come out and play the favorites for that they want to hear and try something different. Years ago, we had, did like a quieter set earlier, okay. but people still wanted us to kind of rock. And so now we just come out and play. <laughs> So, so funny, your, your description of the night, so I just saw on Twitter or something, someone saying, oh, if you didn't live during the 90s, you just don't know how easy we had it. And I think, <laughs> especially now, going back to some of those old favorite songs, I'm excited to talk about some of the new stuff too, but a little nostalgia for yeah. for, for some of the old music is, is, is very welcome. That's what I feel like too. I mean, my whole goal of, of the set is kind of to take people back to a place where um, they were just having fun and, and music was part of their life and they felt really good. And um, I try to bring everybody back to that kind of mindset that and, and with these songs, because that's what it does for me too. So we kind of time travel back to the late eighties and nineties and, uh, and it feels great. You know, everybody walks out feeling good for a while. That's what's that's important. That alone will say, sell the night. Yeah. 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 But then you have. Sure. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead, Ann. Go ahead. I was gonna say the 2020 vision the, the, that you put out last 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 year too. And yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of the arrangements that we're playing are from 2020 vision. So okay. um, you have these classic songs, but after being locked up for a year um i wanted to bring the 2020 vision stuff out so a lot of the arrangements for playing in these songs are from 2020 vision so you hear a lot of the same similar parts from there and uh and similar arrangements to some of those so it's it's nice for me because you know when you play the same song for 30 years it's nice that when you can change it up here or there and still have it come across you know good we want to sing with it so it makes it enjoyable for us and enjoyable for the audience and you know it's great I was going to say, I have to laugh when I hear, or even when I was listening to the music too, you, everybody does sing along. And when we have spoken to other artists, they're like, oh, and it's so wonderful when you see somebody even saying the words or mouthing and you have like a whole stadium singing it to you. I can't imagine the feeling that you get the togetherness and yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It feels fantastic, you know, and, and that's why I've been reminding people how healing it is and how much, you know, we can have all these different beliefs when we get in this room together and sing together. All of a sudden we have this common ground and we're united and can't we take that out of the 
carry it through our lives a little bit because to me, at least it's a big reminder of the common ground we all share. And you can't just let, you know, TV and news and poli politics tear us all apart, you know, because we, we do have this common ground and we do share all these things, you know, we're people with families and kids and dreams and, and we all share that, you know, and we're all trying to do survive and do the best we can. And, and there's so much pulling apart from the TV news and stuff. I'm just like, forget about that. Come on in here. And let's get together, you know, have a few drinks or some good food and some good music. And we find out that, like, we want the same things after all. I was going to say, yeah, when you are listening to music or different artists, you're not looking down the list going, what do they believe or whatever. You're like, I like this sound. I like this. So do you, you know, it brings in a whole wide range of people with different yeah. backgrounds. Yeah. You know, Bodine's, we weren't ever trying to break, you know, new ground or do some experimental sound and we weren't trying to bring in some heavy political message. Our music was always based on let's go out and have fun. You know, let's let's take a break from the world and just have fun and feel good and sing these songs, you know. So that's just where my focus is that still. I just really try to keep it where it's going to be a lot of fun for everybody and it's going to feel really good and you're gonna walk out of there feeling good. And, and like I say, hopefully there's a reminder of how much we are the same instead of different and we don't have to hate each other. You know, we can actually get along. Your music is very much the soundtrack of a generation, you know, and probably my generation, you know, I remember growing up with it. And so I always think it's interesting how much of your music is a soundtrack. I know you've got a lot of music now on um, the ranch. I mean, from party to five, obviously to, you know, yeah, no, and and I should mention there's a, a incredible remake that somebody did of three that's going to be on a, a CW uh, show. Um, what's it called? <laughs> it's like the, they have a show that's kind of based around uh, this town by Area 51, and and you know all the weird stuff out there. Now I can't remember. So too bad. But anyways, our music is still out there and, and shows up in all different shows, you know, like it did in the ranch and Party of Five and stuff like that. But um, to your point, very much, you know, I still get a lot of stories. You know, I was playing last week in Chicago and um, a guy stopped me as I was coming out and, and told me a story about how he was so happy I played the song Stay On because, again, it's a really positive song with a positive message and for me, it's just that message of keep going, you know, keep another day, you know, take another step forward, don't wallow in darkness. And um, for him, he was like, yeah, well, I, I had been diagnosed with cancer and that song just got me through. And people give me these personal messages like that. And I realized just how much a part of their lives these songs were and how I was to it. And, and it's hard to understand unless you're a songwriter, but that's kind of like the biggest reward you can get from someone is to have been part of their lives. And, and so when people say I'm the soundtrack or you're the soundtrack of my life, you know, when I was younger, I was just like, oh, that's great. Um, but it didn't really affect me like it does these days when I, when I really think about being involved in somebody's life, that's a really important thing and an important connection. And I, I'm tremendously grateful for it, really. When you started writing and making music, did you have the vision of just wanting to bring people together or are you just, like you said, more aware of it now, you know, you're just looking to have fun or, cause it is, it is, it has like the everyday person type of sound that just can, everybody can relate, I guess. Yeah. I think I always, you know, I always wanted it to be a lot of fun um, because, you know, the thought of going out on a Friday night after working all week, you know, I grew up as a blue collar kid. My parents worked and that was all that was around me was people working regular jobs for a living and you went out on the weekend or you, you know, took a trip on the weekend or something. And so it was always about fun. So I think I grew up with that mentality of like, oh, you know, we're going to have a gig this weekend. I want the songs to be fun. I want everyone to dance and sing and all that kind of feeling. So I think that was kind of a, 
the perspective of it. I, I don't think I ever thought about how much somebody would necessarily connect with the song because, um, you know, I, I thought if we, if I write a song and I get to play it at a show and somebody sings it, even as a local musician in Milwaukee, that would have been incredible, you know, but I didn't think past that, you know. What I will say is for, for me, music was always a big escape. I was a very shy kid and socially awkward kid and stuff. And so I would escape to the music room in school. I would take all the music courses I could just so I could go and get out of the crowds and go to the music room and escape. I put on headphones and listened to records the same way. It was just take me somewhere. And so I always wanted the music to do that for other people too. I wanted them to put on a song and it be able to take them somewhere where they wanted to go, you know, even if it was escaping something that they didn't want to deal with um, or take them to a good place, you know, that, that was, that was definitely a goal of mine. Um, I'm skipping to your podcast cause now I'm obsessed and I love, I love um, that you pulled away with, you were talking about just, I'm going to back up for a second with uh, the way media wants everybody to have so many likes and so many followers and blah, blah, blah. And you were talking about a show where there was like four people at it and it just so happened. One of them was a writer for time magazine and yeah. blew it up for you. And I just thought, how cool is that? Because some people are just, now like why bother it's only four people or whatever and you just have no idea and I think that's yeah well I think as a band you know our feeling about it was that we just we loved doing that you know even if it was only going to be for whoever showed up we liked playing you know and to this day it's the same for me I like being on stage I like playing music and it fills me up to do it the fact that, you know, other people will show up and sing along with us is, is a really great ad, added benefit, but I, I love to do it, you know, and it feels, it feels great to me. It does something for my soul, you know. I mean, you can get real downhearted in life, you know, when you're not like a huge success. These days, my kids even get really upset, because, you know, that everybody wants to be an influencer and have all these million likes and all this kind of stuff. And it might happen for some people here and there, but it's still kind of like, you know, one in a bazillion people that that happens to. And I think you got to really learn to be content with what you're doing um, wherever you are in life. You know, that's the message I try to push to my kids. But everybody out there is just that, you know, do what fills you up inside, you know, and whether you get a million likes or not, that should really be secondary to, to what you're doing should fill you up and make you feel great. So if you go and play a show or anything you do with just a few people or you don't, you only get four likes, at least you know you're filling your soul up. You're doing something that you want to do and that feels good. And I believe there's an energy in this universe that will assist that and, and you will be happier in the long run. That's my philosophy. <laughs> I can get behind that. <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, you're not waiting for somebody else necessarily to say, OK, we accept you or you're good enough or we'll promote you to where you have a million likes. It's it's that you're happy with yourself then and you don't need somebody to give you or open a door or something. like that. And it's hard. I'm not saying those things are easy. It's, it's difficult. Everybody gets down. But um if you're doing what you love, at least you stand a good chance of fulfilling yourself each day because you love doing it. And I love the how curious you are of how people are finding their creative outlet or how they stumbled upon it. It it I love people's stories, but you really like to it seems to dive into figure out like how did you know or what clicked for you is that kind of what you're trying to do with the podcast a little bit too yeah very much um i talk about the creative element because uh 
my whole life, even as a young child growing up, I believed that creativity was really at the core of everything we were doing. And yet I couldn't, as a kid in school, I couldn't get through to the teachers, you know, about like they were teaching kids like me wrong. Like I, I didn't learn by sitting in a classroom and reading a book that I needed direct experience with something to learn it, you know? And there were a couple of teachers I ran into who understood that, but 90% of them did not. And so I was just obsessed with this feeling of like, look, what we do with creativity in our society, we just kind of poo poo it and put it in the background. Like, oh, you know, you can do that for fun or a hobby, but you need to be serious about this business or dedicating your life to going to work each day, doing something you may or may not like. It was like, why, you know, cause everything that's a big success in our world it starts with a really creative idea. Whether you look at the Elon Musk type people or the great artists out there or the hit movies, all these things just started with a tiny little idea of like, I want to do this. Or I have an idea to do something, you know, even if it's, you're, you're going to build a chair, you know, you got you have an idea in your head and it's just at the core of everything. But yet in school, my entire scholastic career, it was rarely no one was saying, hey, kids, you know. What is your, what do you, I have ideas for? What do you want to work on? You know, how would you approach that? You know, and, and just let them run with their creativity. For some reason, we thought like that was a terrible idea for kids. But I really think in our worlds, we should be nurturing the creativity in, in our kids, especially. But everybody, we should be, you know, pushing everybody for creative ideas because that's, that's the spark of everything. And so the people I talk to on the podcast, that's the thing. I want to get into what they started like as children, what growing up was like, you know, where did that creative spark really hit them that made them think they could do this, you know, like, and usually it's something that's coming very naturally that people are almost afraid to let it happen, you know, because it feels too easy or too natural. And yet I really think that that's the universe telling you do this. Follow this, follow your heart, follow your passions, whatever it is. And yet in school, there's none of that. It's just like, oh, put that away, sit down and spend eight hours trying to learn a math theorem that you don't connect with at all, or you don't see the application for it at all. And it makes no sense to you. You know, I say go with the stuff that makes sense to you. Kind of has a natural pull a little bit. Yeah, I think intuition is something that we don't pay enough attention to in life. And so this podcast gives me a little bit of a megaphone to start yelling that out to people. Like, pay attention to that little voice inside that's telling you, I hate doing this or I love doing this. And follow the I love doing this thing, you know, and try to let it happen as much as you can. You know, it doesn't mean being completely irresponsible in life, but pay attention to it you know, and try to do the best you can with it. I think it's investing in your, that time in yourself, you know, not necessarily going for what's at school and not going for those million likes. Yeah, it is, but it's, it's even bigger than that. You know, it's not just, I always felt music was kind of coming through me instead of to me, you know, like I was channeling something, whether it was what I saw in society or, what I was feeling in life that it was coming through me musically. And then I was able to kind of channel that energy into a song, but you can do that with almost anything in life. You know, people who write great stories or write great screenplays or make great art, it's the same thing, you know? And um, like I was saying, I think that's just the core of everything, every great idea, even when a great company gets started and there's lots of people working there, like building a car and stuff it had to start with a creative idea you know so i say let's let's focus on that is more than we do or more than we have in our society so that's the, that's you know that's what the podcast is really about they've been fun to listen to but you obviously having done them all have you gotten some interesting advice or heard of some habits that you thought ooh Ooh, I really like that one. That's going to change how I do things. Um, yeah, well, I like, you know, the Steve Sims one, you know, he's an incredible guy who just really stumbled into the Bluefish company. He, he was trying to be a stockbroker <laughs> and 
you know, went to Hong Kong because he wanted to get a job there in finance. And then he's working as security in a nightclub in, instead while he tries to be a, a stockbroker. And meantime, he builds this connection, this network of all these people and friends. And he's putting parties together for people that that he's not even paying attention to because it's so easy and so simple. And he had a great um, philosophy for just saying, yes, like, sure, I can do this. Even when he wasn't sure he could do it, he, you just kind of stumble your way through it. I think the best advice I ever heard was, was don't wait to have everything figured out, you know, make mistakes. That's how you learn to do anything is fall down and get back up. And so I think Steve had a lot of that in his life. A lot of the people I talked to, same thing. They just, they, just stumbled into it you know there's some coming up like that with people i'm doing podcasts now that same same idea something was happening over here naturally that it wasn't even what they were thinking they were supposed to do but it was so natural they almost couldn't take it serious and then all of a sudden they realized this is just happening on its own you know i think that's it was that way for bodines as well we were doing something we really wanted to do but we weren't saying you know we have to have a hit record or even make a record i just i was shocked when i found myself standing in a recording studio guitar because i'd only been playing guitar for a few years i grew up playing drums i had never sang a song in my life so the fact that i was standing here doing that i couldn't argue with it because it was just happening you know and there was no reason for me to say like oh I, that's not what i intended to do because it was happening and all, the best thing you can do is just go with it, you know? And so I think that's the best advice I get from anyone when I, that I talk to. What, what do you believe gave you uh, the confidence or whatever to roll with, you know, you're a drummer and all of a sudden you're becoming the guitarist and uh, the singer like, that's a big move. And especially, like you said, you were a shy kid. Like, what pulled that out of you to say, like, okay, I'm going to do this or try? Like, I find that intriguing in itself. Yeah. I don't know. I, I try to figure that out. I, somehow I was born with a personality that just, um, you know, kind of put what well, I anything I want to do, I, I, my brain just figures it out somehow, but I didn't have a lot of confidence about playing guitar, singing, or even writing songs in, in, for years. And, you know, we were lucky that several record companies all wanted us at once. And so I figured, I didn't feel like I was doing anything. Great. They must've saw something that I couldn't see that, they thought it was good. And because we were coming from Wisconsin, we weren't in any kind of trendy place. So we were able to just develop our own thing, you know, and we weren't following any trends. You know, if you look back to when Bodines was releasing their first record, it was all Bon Jovi and Poison and these hard, you know, ACDC hard rock. And, and here you got Bodines, like it didn't make any sense. Record company saw it and, a year later, we were, you know, voted like best new band in Rolling Stone and stuff. And so, I don't know. I just didn't, and I knew I wanted to do it. So I felt like, you know, I'll just do my best and and try to be as authentic, creative as I, and uh, hope for the best. But like I say, I knew I enjoyed doing it. I knew it felt good to me. So I didn't have to think about is this right or wrong. I already answered that question. Me music felt really good and I knew for me I was doing the right thing when I played it as opposed to I had worked in plenty of factories and I knew how that felt and that didn't feel good you know it wasn't fulfilling at all and I think that's the kind of thing people have to pay attention to is that even when it seems strange you know if it feels good do it and that's not to say like you know doing drugs and escaping life it's it's more of just doing stuff that's real and authentic inside you that that feels like the right way to go 
that's you know the best way I can describe it. Like uh, Thoreau said about taking the path less traveled and all that kind of stuff. I think that was all speaking to the same thing that I'm trying to talk about. It's, you, you know, it may not be obvious to some people, but it might. It should feel obvious to you. I think it's refreshing too that you have been at this for 30 years and not, you know, many people morph into whatever they think they need to to stay up there where you have stayed steady and you're still yeah. making the crowd sing back to you and fill in the places. Yeah, it's a weird, it's weird to think about how long I've been doing it and singing these songs. And people ask me sometimes, like, you get sick of the songs? I really don't. I mean, because when people bring an energy to the room, that's that's all you feel is it feels good. And so I don't get I don't get tired of them at all. But I I I'm I feel, you know, what an incredible thing it is to still be doing it after all these years and uh, and or be able to do it. I should say, Bodine's definitely we're never going to be a, a trendy thing that does all the right trendy things. Like when we first went to L.A., I really hated it out there. <laughs> and people would come up to me and say, don't you just love it here? And you need to move here and stuff. And I was just like, God, I hate it here. I really do. <laughs> I just didn't connect with that scene. And so um, it was tough for me to... Uh, to connect with them and and make sense of it. Seems like now might be a nice time to pivot to talking a little bit. You've got an album that's coming out in the spring. And yeah. what makes you excited about that album? Well, it's stuff that was on in the ranch for a lot of years. So um, it's songs I've been waiting to get out that I should have probably got out, you know, a year or two ago. Sorry, I'm trying to grab a charger here. Um, so that's exciting about it, you know, and as a musician, anytime you have new songs, as a songwriter, you want to get that stuff out and you want to get it going to people so they can hear it. And so, um, you know, I'm excited about that. I'm excited for, to give people new stuff to listen to stuff that's been sitting there for a while. Um, I was planning on releasing it last or in 2020, but when the COVID thing happened, it didn't make any sense to put out a new record because I couldn't go and tour and do the shows. So instead I put it aside and did the 2020 vision stuff instead, which was a fun project, but um, I think it's nice to release new stuff, especially for fans, you know, who are hardcore and want to hear new stuff. Or if you're a lot of people from around the world have heard the ranch songs and they're always emailing us like, where can I get this? So now I give them a chance to be able to get this music that I, wrote a couple of years ago, but it'll be nice because that record has been done for a while. So I'm trying, to, I also have another record after that I'm already on, so. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. No moss growing under you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's just a bunch of songs and you just want to get them out. But, and I, in, in the spirit of full disclosure, I'm, I don't watch The Ranch, I don't know it, but I was looking at some of the songs and it, the Runs in the Family is one that really struck me and it seemed a little bit like a, a departure. It was more, so much more melancholy than I think so much of your music is, but I just thought that was a, yeah. and I don't know if it's well, on the album, but I'm just saying. <laughs> what's interesting about The Ranch is that I didn't, I wasn't really picking the subject matter. The producer was a longtime fan of Bodine's, but as they were writing the song, he would talk to me about, well, this is what's coming up. This is the kind of stuff I need you to be singing songs about. So like my hometown even was, he was asking me for songs about small towns and your hometowns where you come from and stuff like that. So I was able to get this subject matter and just sit down and write a song around it. So Runs in the Family was the same thing. It was just based on this. If you do watch The Ranch, it's based on, you know, this family and all the troubles that families go through, especially in that situation where they're trying to maintain a ranch, you know, and it's a hard life. And, uh, and they're very, you know, of a certain mindset, we'll say, and stuff like that. So it just made me think about how we do carry on these qualities of our parents, even when we may not want to. Years later, you look back and see all this stuff that does run in your family and how you do have similar perspectives of your parents had and stuff like that. So it made for good subject matter to write the song. And so 
a lot of these songs are like that, which was nice for me as a songwriter because sometimes it's hard to just come up with subject matter, you know? Um, so when somebody kind of hands an idea yeah. off to you, that makes it a lot, um, it's not easier, but it gives you something to work with. Well, a different process even. I would think it, we would produce different results. I mean, just doing something in a different way. Yeah, it's just it's just kind of nice when someone, you know, pitches it up at you and then you can just, you know, be like, oh yeah, that makes you think of this or that or this. And um, then you can put it together, you know? I mean, like my hometown was great. And 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 then what ha happened in Waukesha with the Christmas parade stuff, that everybody started yeah. emailing, texting us about the song and how, it meant so much to them at that moment. And I was just like, wow, you know, who knew? But that's that's often the way it works with music or art and things like that. Um, you think you're just writing a simple song and then it touches people in a way you never imagined. Well, and that is when your talent is such a gift. Because I think especially during that time, anything that can bring the sense of community that you've mentioned so much through the music is so healing to the community. Yeah, I mean, that you hope that's what you hope for. That it, like I was saying, is that you have that personal connection somehow that makes it, um, that's kind of the greatest reward you can get, you know, from music is to have someone really be connected to your music. I, I think any songwriter would say that. Yes. Well, we are looking forward to being connected at the end of the week we are i am looking I'm looking for i'm hoping you'll make maybe one or two of the new ones but I'll, I'll obviously i want to hear the fun hits that i'll you know that'll be yeah. exciting too so absolutely i'm going to remind folks at the dakota on on december 16th and 17th two shows each night one at 7 p.m one at 9 p.m and they can get um tickets online go to your website or go to the dakota jazz club website. go to the dakota yeah okay. um I think we'll put up another link probably in the next year or so that, that you can find, but otherwise just go to the Dakota site and you can buy tickets right there for the show. And- uh, Good, well, we'll ask you, you know, where, where the name of our show is mostly Minnesota music. So we've made some special allowances today for our friends from Wisconsin. <laughs> but if you could, if you have one memory of playing in Minnesota that you could share. Um, well, the first thing that comes to my mind is really, really cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be very cold and a chance of snow and freezing. And, and that's, that's, you know, my first feeling about Minnesota. Although lately when we've been there in the summer, we've played many, many shows there throughout the years, but it can get very hot as well. So it's, but, but it's always been a great area for us, a great city for us. They had great radio there and from the eighties and nineties for us. So. We were able to make a lot of fans, and I know there's a lot of fans out in the suburbs. Hopefully, they come downtown for a night and sing along with us. I think so. I think so. Kurt, thank you so much for your time. Thanks uh, for your gift of music. And again, we, we're looking forward to the show on Friday. We'll see you on Friday night. That'll be great. And thanks again for waiting for me. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Appreciate it.